Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com, CardHoarder.com, Alter Sleeves, as well as Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters just like you. I am Evan Irwin, Irwin and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, MTG Nerd Girl. Hey guys. And Ruben Bressler. How do you do this this late, Evan? This is unreasonable. <laughs> It's past late. my bedtime. It's literally why we're doing it as late as we do is because it was after the bedtimes of all my children and not oh. just after their bedtimes, like after their bedtimes when they got up for water and then they got scared okay. about something. And there was a whole series of things that had to happen so then we could hold it after they were all That makes done. sense. That's well, right. I hate it. I hate being up this late. <laughs> I'm an old man and living on the West Coast means I get to do this at a reasonable hour. That's right. You get to hang out with us around 8 o'clock instead of 11 at night. Well, whatever, because we do. If you missed the pre-show, subscribers to this channel get access to our NSFW version early. And, of course, you can get that on Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter at $5 or up. And we kick it off with our first pick and our giveaway. Get your chance of 50 bucks worth of anything at CoolSuffing.com by typing exclamation mark raffle in the chat. But subscribe first to get two chances to win and support your favorite streamer with your suggestions at the end of the show to see who we raid after we're done with the show this evening. And that is, of course, thanks to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day. And we move on here to the first pick, and there's no two ways about it. We are all about that Kamigawa Neon Dynasty life. It's it's a lot, um, so I'll try to take it in, in small doses, okay? Uh, first, we'll start with just some art, and then we can talk about kind of our art impressions and the look and the feel of it. There was a really cool teaser trailer. If you haven't seen that, you should definitely go check that out, which is really cool. Um, but on the screen right now, Iganjo Seat of the Empire was the first piece of artwork that they unveiled. And this is Iganjo Castle plus plus with attachments. And it looks cool as hell. Man, I just, oh, man, I love the aesthetic of this. I love that we're doing Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. um, I just like it, this is the coolest. I love futuristic noir, and the fact that we're even going back to Kamigawa is really exciting. You know, I'm nowhere near the Kamigawa fanboy that Evan is, but I enjoy it. I and the story was never the problem; it was the cards. So the fact that we're getting the plot. And seeing the remnants of the Spirit War is so cool. And the updates to the to all of the places of note, like a ganjo, is yeah. just awesome. I think we're getting right now, I'm, and I hope it stays this way. I think we are getting what I was hoping Kamigawa would be originally, and that is a lot more flavorful and hopefully a lot more menacing, a lot less menacing cards. You know, I think in some ways, you know, Kamigawa kind of needed to happen. You know, I mean, there's certain things and sets and sort of issues that you kind of have to go through to be like, you know what? That wasn't really what we were looking for. But there were definitely points that people like and a lot of nostalgia and a lot of love yeah. for some of that old stuff. Not necessarily the cards and or the mechanics, but mainly sort of how it made you feel. So if you look at Boseju, who endures which is amazing because the lore based on what they were saying was the, the tree kept, kept growing. So mm -hmm. as it kept getting higher and higher, they kept building kind of more temples and palaces on it until it just, it just kept going. Uh -huh. And so Besage who shelters all, by the way, which is a $34 card right now, Ooh, sure, which is ridiculous. Um, but that looks absolutely amazing and it's sweet, but then we got to talk about the card. Let's go ahead and just jump in to Kaito Shizuki. This is the legendary, this is the Ninja Planeswalker, y'all. It's a black, blue, and a generic mana for a mythic legendary Planeswalker, Kaido. It has three loyalty. And at the beginning of your end step, if Kaito Shizuki entered the battlefield this turn, he phases out. And note, that only happens once because he's only entering the battlefield once unless you blink him or something. Right. Um, but he disappears, which is awesome. Uh, plus <laughs> one, you draw a card, then discard a card unless you attack this turn. Minus two, you make a 1-1 one, one blue ninja creature token with, quote, this creature can't be blocked. And minus seven, you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a blue or black creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. So between this and the regular card, and Ninja Frame, and the Super Cool Raccoon going on there. This is just totally sick, and I love it. No, this card's really awesome. I like that it protects itself without like the classic way of protecting itself. This is really unique for a Planeswalker. I think it's pretty sweet. Kind of got both, right? Like it's got, it can make a creature to not 
get killed. Yeah. But, right. but it also just naturally just goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome. I also really huge. love the set symbol. Like, yeah. I know it's sort of a weird thing, but that set symbol is pretty sweet. Because I've been seeing, like, some of them kind of looked a little bit the same in the last couple of sets. Mm -hmm. Where I actually kind of couldn't tell the difference very well. But this one is really neat. I was actually going to bring up the set symbol. I'm glad you did. Because this is one of the, one of, if not my favorite set symbol. I mean, partially because, you know, we play mountains. But... In particular, it is so different than everything else that they've done as a set symbol, especially in recent memory. They sort of blend together with these like, here's a weird curve with some lines maybe, right? Or a block with some, with, you know, here's an M followed by some numbers. This is so different from everything else. And this character, I don't know what's up with this character, but you had me at Spirit Raccoon. Mm. I don't know... <laughs> I didn't need anything else. I, I want that character to have a card. Mm -hmm. I hope that the token of the ninja is the, is the <laughs> raccoon. raccoon. Ninja. Um, so oh, but it makes a, oh yeah, it says it makes a blue ninja token. Yes. It so it makes a human. I, I hope it's a raccoon. You're just right. A it just ninja. says blue ninja. So no we'll see. human, no raccoon, just ninja. That's right. So it could be any form. Now, um, they're a ninja. Sort of like the. Uh, what was the one from the D&D &D set with the little hamster? Yes, Minsk and Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so we need we need the little raccoon token to be like the Boo. Yeah, yeah. The raccoon, the Maverick girl there, thank you, knows the raccoon is the Kami of the Spark, <gasps> which is amazing. And that set symbol, and I would love to be corrected here. I have a feeling that's one of the largest set symbols oh, they've it's ever huge. made. It's gigantic compared to most. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm okay with that. But for those who don't know or can't see this in the podcast, it's sort of the top of a mountain with the with the sun kind of behind it. But the mountain is also kind of blocky in a way that looks sort of digital and dynamic that way. Um, you can also see the buildings. Like I think the yeah. outline depicting the the shade of the mountain actually has buildings. Like yeah. the, that's the, what I was, yeah that's that's yeah. what I interpreted as you know something Ooh. digital. But that, now that you say that, like cityscape, uh, yeah, it's a cityscape, which is great. Um, but also note that Kaido Shizuki has a very extra special version on the screen right now. The illustrator of Fist of the North Star did a special, unique version. I can imagine this shows up like the special extended border art Planeswalkers do. Uh, I'm not 100% on that yet, but it is unbelievably sweet. It would be. So this is, oh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that there's no raccoon. A little bit. Yeah. yeah there's but, no raccoon here, huh? Like, I get that he's still, he's badass. This looks amazing. But now, like, there may be a raccoon. a raccoon and we just can't see him because he's a ninja. He's a, that's <laughs> an invisible a cheap, raccoon. That's a cheap, that's a cheap joke, but I'm taking it. <laughs> um, this is, what is this guy's name? Hara Takashi? No. Hara, oh, oh, the artist's name is, yeah. Hara, Hara Tetsuo. Hara Tetsuo. Nice. And uh, Fist of the North Star is a very popular manga um has been turned into movies and tv shows so this is are. the castlevania um this is the uh anime liliana of the set for sure yeah this is the super super exciting stuff there um i'm gonna bring up the article they posted here so we can take a look at the way they lay it out this initial image this is the key art from the set those are clearly the original spirit Ooh. dragons reimagined yeah, version 2.0 we'll talk about one here in a minute the key to these uh or this cycle is that they have two options when they die versus the first one you know yosei and gagusho just they just did one thing every right. time which is cool only they only did one thing only just, darn they only ran standard so for years. underpowered yeah seriously uh so they brought out the packaging here which does confirm that we do have awesome uh rats riding motorcycles so mm. <laughs> so biker mice from mars confirmed I like that um yes please uh the wanderer is on the set booster packaging that's really cool um, and, and I would not be surprised if this is where the Wanderer is from, of course. This has got to be where the Wanderer is from, right? You'd hope. Um, the, the, the trailer, I won't play it for you, but I assure you, it is super rad. And, like, it's cool because, and we were talking about this on the pre-show, the theme of the whole set is the old and the new. It's not just a cyberpunk or whatever neon glowing set. It's half is going to be the old school classic, you know, Kamigawa stuff. And then the other yeah. half is going to be cyber ninja craziness, which is awesome. Um, wizards, <clears throat> wizards, we got to talk. All right. We got to <laughs> look, listen, 
These commander set symbols are stupid. I'm sorry. You're we got to stop it. What is this like oh, yeah. 27th version of a shield with a with a with a thing and some polygons? You got to let it go. I don't know what you need to do. Use the set symbol of the set and put a C in it or something, but like this is bad. No one is going to remember this set symbol ever for anything ever. This is just really bad. I don't know why they keep doing this. I don't know why they're addicted to these weird shields. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. Yeah. There's two just put, commander decks. Just take the same mountain and put a moon behind it instead right. of a sun. Or, or flip it or, you know, something. Give me something because you're you're taking all this nice space to make this really cool looking setup to the side of you know, the, the mountain. And then you got this another dumb shield. I just, I can't. Anyway. All the sets coming out. There's lots of story. They actually unveiled one of the first story pieces, I believe, it was just the other day. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, that Kamiga was all about the story and it had a fantastic story back in the day about the Ganjo and the Ganjo Castle and the people who were ruling there and that which was taken and all this other stuff, yeah. um, which I super duper loved. And Konda. Awesome. Konda, and, yes. And all of those characters, yeah. That's right. Um, which is neat. And the first details and previews, of course, was the weekly MTG that we talked about. And there's that planeswalker because he's a cyber samurai and there's a super cool raccoon guy at the Kami of the spark, as it were. I just, I just love the aesthetic. I just love, first yeah. of all, These bright lines. pink. Like let's talk about highlighter pink for a second, which <laughs> I'm not sure has ever appeared on a magic card. Maybe in like when you make black cards that are purple, you've got a little bit of highlighter pink, like Some Leyline of the Void, right? Like sort of like a white from the D&D &D set, mm -hmm. W-I-G-H-T. Like those, you sometimes get pink. But this is like King Kong versus Godzilla pink. You know what yeah. I mean? Like As it should be. right in your face. And I just, uh, I just love the mistiness. And it feels like Blade Runner. It feels like, you know, yeah. all the things I love. The 30 second or, or one minute hype video, I rarely care about those. The hype video for this set just had me on the edge of my seat. Like, yes, give me more. I want only, I watched it like five times today. It's I was like, this rad. is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I want another thing of this. The story that came out featuring the commie that is like a drug dealer kind of, who is like <laughs> trying to, you know, make his deal through, I don't want to give away the whole story, but he's like in the middle of spirit Halloween, not mm -hmm. spirit Halloween, but Halloween for spirits. And he's trying to, anyway, it's really good. Um, and I just love everything about this. It's so good. <laughs> and like the fact that that character looks sort of like a raccoon when they yeah. like activate. Oh my God. It's so rad. I can't stand how rad it is. It's super rad. Um, so anyway, there was my rant about the commander thing. Wizards, seriously, come on, y'all. Yeah. Figure that out. Um, all right. So we talked about the Planeswalker, which is great. These freaking lands, I swear to God, these lands are unbelievable. I, yeah. I was not, my body was not prepared. And I mean, mm -hmm. this was after the Spacex. This was after the Space Duels or the Space Shocks. And this comes and turns out to be one of the coolest, most dynamic and interesting, just gorgeous. I'm running out of adjectives for these freaking lands, y'all. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maverick Girl does say they snuck in the Planeswalker glitch Easter egg to that uh, told us what the Planeswalker did just a little bit. Just a little, just early. A little bit early. Which was, um, nice. which was very nice. Yeah. These basics, uh, one of which is the old and one of which is the new, which is all about what we're what we're doing about the theme, it. They've yeah. got. They've got yeah. the kanjis of of what the, the what the words are with the huge uh, mana symbols on each of the cards. These are some of the most gorgeous basic lands that will appear in regular booster packs that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, these are really really pretty. Um, I'm a little surprised that they are putting these in all of the versions. Like when we had the like alternate Japanese. Uh, planeswalkers that only came in the Japanese packs. Do you guys remember those? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was when I first saw these on Twitter. I was a little like my knee jerk reaction was thinking that these were only going to be posted in the Japanese packs. Right. So I'm really really glad to see that this is going to be just the basics for this. And it's mm -hmm. like it's top to bottom, you know, like the Japanese read top to bottom and all that. Like it's just everything. Just it just it's so beautiful and perfect and the wood cutting type stuff and yeah, man. Yeah. 
I can't House, get over it. House of Cards uh, references Hanafuda cards, which are the uh, it's not in it, you know the Western playing cards have like aces and kings and stuff. The Hanafuda, mm-hmm. you know, you probably are most familiar with them from your emoji keyboard. There's a couple of Hanafuda cards late mm-hmm. in the emoji keyboard, which are flower cards essentially. Is what called. So, mm-hmm. uh, and these definitely harken back to those with the huge symbol in the upper left and the very detailed art. Um, just, just a spectacular um, uh, turn turn up. Absolutely. So those are just absolutely incredible, and you can get them in all the different types of boosters, draft set, all that stuff, which is amazing and and very much appreciated. Uh, the the card that they showed off, sort of the mythic that they showed off, is the first of the mythic dragon cycle. Now, obviously, back in the day, we didn't even have mythic rarity, but there was the cycle of the five dragons. We definitely wanted to have those. Now we basically have version two point oh. Because Ryusei was left over, and there's a whole story bit about he goes and saves the dragons that they're going to get into. But at Sushi, the Blazing Sky is two red and two generic mana for a 4-4 Mythic Legendary Dragon Spirit. It has Flample, which is flying and trample. Mm -hmm. And when it dies, you choose one. You exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards, or you create three treasure tokens. So literally, as I'm reading this, I'm now noticing that the two cards until the end of your next turn, which means if they do kill it on your turn after you tapped out for it, you can still play those cards on your future turn. So this card does seem to be... It's priced to move. Sure. Question mark. We sure do have a lot of mythic four four dragons for four. We do. Um, yeah. That are going to be legal and standard all at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not even counting gold span dragon. Like we've got, we've got moon veil idiot. Yeah. Um, you know, they just printed a brand new one. The avalanche rider dragon that just came out moon veil one. And the one that makes uh, XXs based on instance or sorceries. You yes. Play. Mirror yeah. idiot. Mirror yeah, but or something. there's just so many that I can't even remember them anymore. Like I used to get excited when a cheap dragon came out. Like when Thunderbreak Regent came yeah. out, I was like, oh my God, we've got a 4-4 flyer for four. And now, you know, Leyline Tyrant comes and goes and I, I could give a crap. <laughs> Power creep is real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is, it's interesting, you know, um, I, w- I was talking um, on Twitter the other day, and I think Zvi called this like, you know, uh, damning with faint praise, which was, you know, I said one of the cool things about alchemy, <coughs> I think, anyway, and one of the things that I've actually spoken to R&D members about over the years is that they're cool with like, you know, certain strategies or colors being the best strategies of colors. Something's got to be the best, yada, yada. But the cool part and the question comes, what is the c- exact correct build for the metagame? What is the exact correct build that you can kind of push the deck in? And the way I was putting that was, you know, the, the green deck right now, if you play Alchemy Standard and you have some of the Alchemy cards, there's there's a kind of a variety of ways you can build the green deck. It's no longer just you play Ren and Seven, you play a Seeker's chariot and you play these one or two you know you play rangers class you can play a whole bunch of different stuff now because the metagame is totally different and alchemy has some really powerful stuff in it um whereas here i start to see it sushi and i go you know what there's so many four mana four four dragons you know what is the exact dragon mix should you have one or the other should you include this one versus the other one that that to me is interesting at least this one seems purely value as opposed to like Moonvale Regent, you want to be playing with lots of different colors, right? Sure. Like that's telling you how to play the card a little bit different. A little. Um, but that card Leyline, also says if you're hellbent, you draw a card, right? So Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool I mean, too. this one this one also says if you're hellbent, draw some cards, I guess. But they're all good. Like I don't I don't think that there is a a version of mono red that wants one of these and then a different version of mono red that wants a different one of these. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to be wrong, but that does not I don't I don't see Oof. it. Yeah, Leyline Tyrant is terrible and was a mythic in Zendikar Rising. <laughs> it's and, terrible. And I just, it's a 4/4 flyer. It has nothing but upside. Why is it terrible? Yeah. It's t- it's terrible. It's, it's bad. Not it just doesn't do half of what these other mythic dragons do basically, and that's really kind of weird to say. But again, this to me is if the if the answer is we have so many cool four mana dragons, I'm not sure one, which one to play is a better answer than this is the only dragon deck you should play. Here is the ground out over hundreds of thousands of yeah. games, the best version you should play. I think that's more interesting. Anyway. And also standard is better when the best 
card in standard is an angel or a demon or a dragon. Or a dragon. Absolutely. You know, you want people to go like, hey, this dragon's cool. Not like this yeah. one weird character you never heard of, you know, right. versus system had that problem. Um, you know, you want the best card to be Wolverine, for God's sake. Right. Uh, so moving on here, we have Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos. Now, this is like 1,200 years in the future. This is the same guy. This is the same Hidetsugu from his second right way back in the day. Mm-hmm. He's still around and he's pissed, as you can see. Uh, Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos is a black and three generic mana for a 4-4 rare legendary ogre demon. You better hold on. This thing is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. For one black mana, you can sacrifice a creature colon and scry two. That's that's just a colon. You can do it as much time as you want. For a red and two generic mana, you can tap and colon to exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, and when you exile a non-land card this way, it deals damage equal to the exiled card's mana value to any target. Any target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is setting up the Dracos of the world to sit on top of your deck, you know, the Emrakuls of the world to sit on top of your deck. It, it like this is like black red card draw, which is crazy, but it's like the greatest card draw of all time because you get to deal an, just a ton of damage. I mean, you reveal a five drop, you're dealing five to something that's incredible. Like, not yeah. only does it seem amazing for Commander, it seems fantastic for constructed just in general. We'll get to the special versions here in a minute, but like, this card is awesome. Yeah, so so I used to play the uh insidious dreams draco combo in old extended it was not good but that's what this is this guy is uh like uh erratic explosion insidious dreams combo um or kaboom for those of you who remember kaboom one of the few (laughs) cards with an exclamation point in its name that's legal that's what this guy is. Um, the for last time we saw Hidgetsugu, he was heartless. The heartless Hidgetsugu, uh, who at the time was a shaman. I don't know how he became a demon. Something. Uh, there's a story reason. I, I can't remember exactly. Well, he successfully did the second right, I guess, and probably <laughs> some more after that. But boy, howdy, this is a powerful card. Yeah. yeah. You, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was known. It says right here. You know, the he worshipped the most powerful of the oni, the demons of Kamigawa, and succeeded in becoming one himself. So oh, he ate a demon. Oh, good. Chomp, chomp, eating demons. Well, that far right treatment is the soft glow treatment, which I'm guessing is all the creatures or the cards that are in the future side of things would be in a soft glow treatment. It's very purple, uh, okay. and interesting. And of course the, uh, down here we have, uh, masterpieces on crack everybody. Yeah. Now, now, so I loved everything so far. Mm-hmm. Um, we are now approaching jump the shark terror. Yeah, we're, we're approaching, um, wizards makes collectibles. That's what they do. Uh, Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos is going to have four special foil treatments that the way that they look is said to kind of feel like it's glowing neon. Uh, now, the way that I interpreted it on the stream maybe have been incorrect because I thought they said that one version was the rarest and I think it was the other, but whatever. The yellow version, I can tell you, is going to WPN Premium Stores. Don't know exactly how or why or when, but that's where they're going. The other three versions, which I believe the red is the rarest, um, and so it goes blue, green, red in terms of least rare to rarest, um, is 1%. They're in 1% of the collector packs. And that's unbelievably rare. Like, that's just crazy. Because first of all, there's, you know, there's less packs in a collector box. And then you think of, you know, of of the packs that you open, will 1% have these? And of the 1% that do have these, which version, you know, which rarity do you have of these? And, you know, as I was mentioning in the free show, there's different card games out there. Particularly the one that comes to mind is Dragon Ball Super because, you know, People know Dragon Ball, they know Goku or whatever. Well, they make cool Goku cards and they'll put one like per case, but it won't just be one Goku. It'll be like either two or three versions of him or it'll be like some different cards plus Goku. And those things are like eight hundred to a thousand dollars. And that's exactly what these sound like. Yeah. Um, one of the there there does seem to be like one hot ticket item in the collector boosters. Like uh, we had the the Japanese alter demonic tutor or something from from the, the, the Strixhaven one. The Time Warp was a big one, too. 
Yeah. 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 I, I remember uh, I did a giveaway on my stream and the first pack we opened was the, the was the Tudor, the foil Ooh. one. It's like $350 or something. Wow. Good way to start. <laughs> yeah. These are going to be, lot. these are going to be crazy to open. They're going to be worth a ton of money. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't, I mean, this set more so than even recent sets feels like a nightmare for people trying to collate. No, it's just like it. impossible. You know, I, I, I can imagine there's, you know, some research somewhere that was done questions that were asked things that were investigated likely in other similar hobbies, not <clears throat> just the magic community or the magic collector, but things like, you know, what does the sports card collector care about stuff like that. And, you know, it, to me, it feels like whatever that was, they came to the answer, which is make as many versions of a card as you can. It doesn't matter. Make as many special rare versions of a card as you want and don't go stupid crazy, but you know, this is this isn't crazy. This is three different versions or whatever that you get out of packs, but make them super duper duper rare. That mm -hmm. makes the opening experience more interesting and exciting, and that makes the people who do have them feel that much more, you know, kind of uh, what proud, I guess, is a way to have it sure. be. You know, they own one of these because they're going to be really hard to get. Yeah, so. I'm wondering. Like this card does seem really good too, which is going to really juice that cost because there's no way this is not going to be constructed playable oh this yeah. card is dope like this card seems incredibly like this is going to be a part of a sacrifice deck slash again a red black deck that starts drawing cards and bolting things or just dealing a ton of damage to things just seems absolutely bananas yeah. um so yeah well, card's the, good. I, I think that the regular versions of this are gonna be five to ten dollars right that's like what a what a good four of rare in a good deck is in standard, probably. More or less, yeah. Depends how good. Like, I mean, we have like outliers like Boros Reckoner that just is thirty dollars for whatever reason because right. it's the only deck, and this seems like it could be getting closer to that territory. So mm. the reason why I ask is because previously the really special versions of cards we haven't had on tournament playable cards. Mm. We haven't yeah. had be, right because we had like promo Liliana. Right, where that didn't really see competitive play. We had promo Soren, which to this point has not really seen competitive play. It's been okay. A little bit. Or like fancy art Soren or whatever. Right. The, yeah. the best one I can think of is when there was the store promo Ugin, which got up to like $120. But these are going to be significantly rarer. Oh, yeah. These are going to be and like, when you think of masterpieces that are now three to $400, like these are significantly more rare than those. Like, right. Like, really really way and again the different colors having like there's just going to be giant jumps in price yeah just huge um yeah what so, even is competitive play anymore good uh, question right. well regardless that's really neat and interesting and yeah. they note here that game day is returning for the first time in four years I didn't know it took that long off. I thought it took just a year or two off, but yeah. game day is back apparently on March 5th through 6th and you can get a foil considered just for playing a fateful absence foil for getting top eight. And the winner gets a foil at sushi, the blazing sky. So again, wizards nice. must think this card is really dope or yes. one of the coolest commanders ever. Cause you don't put them here. Otherwise. So. Yeah. You don't give it away as a trophy unless you think it's really good. Right. Historically, the, these cards have been like Arbor elf, uh, you know, like good uncommon, right. is it charm, whatever, and then worm coil engine, right? Like big, yeah. big chase mythic rares. So they must think real highly of this guy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool to see, you know, how Wizards does kind of pick and choose. And oftentimes they know what's going to be the best in in many instances, not every instance, but a lot of times they know what's going to be very exciting. So um, that's pretty much the end of the Kamigawa stuff that they unveiled today, which again was a lot. And I was totally okay with that. Yeah. Um, and it was just really wonderful to hear the story that the love of Kamigawa brought this set into being. It wasn't Wizards didn't want it. You know, suits weren't asking for it. It was because everyone's like, hey, Kamigawa. Kamigawa was great. We know it had problems, but it's like there's a chunk in our heart that we can't get rid of. And man, they are doing it right. And I absolutely love it. All right, let's move on here to gather the townsfolk. Uh, not a lot to talk about, really. And it's funny 
to even have this at this point as a news item because when they you see the the lands just now of Kamigawa have just blown away anything we've seen probably since Infinity. And here we have the Moonlit Lands from Innistrad Crimson Vow as promos. Uh, there's going to be commander parties that show up for Commander Collection Black and Innistrad Double Feature, which is coming next month. And uh, those will feature uh, these black and white lands that I have honestly heard nothing but people be mad about because they're so hard to discern on the table yeah. what, what lands you have. But These are not even particularly pretty. No, they're not. The planes is dope. I think that that's the good one. Yeah, yeah that's the good one. Yeah. Um, the planes is really cool. I, yeah, but again, we just had hot pink and like you know, and like yeah, Japanese woodcut, woodblock type, you know, yeah, stuff, it, which it's is amazing tough for me to feel excited about the gothic. Yeah, stuff this is, anymore. Right, this, this was would like, have been cool two months ago. Yeah, it would have been it would have been cooler before Infinity, and you know it's fine. This is one of those things that like you know there's going to be the stripped of, of any color, but feature a silver foil etched treatment with a touch of gloss, which is just going to make them even more hard to discern across the table. But you know it's this is fine. This is I mean they did this with the Crimson Vow and with Midnight Hunt, and this is like a, the third version of these, and I think they're Very even neat. just compared to those side by side, the worst set of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're probably the worst side of them, but yeah. pretty neat regardless. Uh, uh, another slight story. It's been a slow news week. Thankfully, Kamigawa got us out of it. Um, but another another story this week, uh, which is uh, they're going to be keyword counters, 12-sided dice made by Ultra Pro. Uh, these are going to be 22 millimeters, so they're, they're fairly large dice. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to have things like, you know, first strike That's, and flying mm-hmm. and trample on the sides of them. So these are going to be 12-sided dice, mm-hmm. and they're going to be the size of a big D20. Right. Now, note, if you can see here in the picture I have pulled up, they're, they don't have the words. They have the little oh, symbols. The arena symbols. symbols. The arena symbols. Interesting. Right. So I'll be honest, uh, that makes me like them quite a bit less. Yeah, um, same. You know, if they had like the word, you know, lightly there or in the background or something that would let me tell that this means lifelink and not just I think the heart means the lifelink thing. But I'm yeah. sure that the, they will probably come with a little like paper tracker that you could maybe put in your deck box, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. That that always that makes it. it even worse, but it's fine. Look, I, I but thought these it are was for neat. putting. These aren't just for signifying that they have the ability. These are for being reach counters. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so, trample counters for Ikoria or whatever. Ikoria, yeah. It, it began in Ikoria, and then they showed up again later in um, sure. some other sets. And I can imagine they're going to keep doing them because I don't think this like falls from the sky. Slash, right. they're never doing keyword. You know, counters I think keyword again. counters can just exist i think that, that i think i think that those are something along the lines of having spells that are spells on one side lands on the other mm-hmm. i think that keyword counters should just happen i think that that's just a thing that's just a tool in their toolbox now I they should it. say this thing just has keywords as a counter now. absolutely and it will be pretty cool for coverage they're right when we get some one day uh i did forget to note this because i suck at this part which is we moved on from first pick to gather the townsfolk thanks to our sponsor cardhoarder.com get that up on the screen cardhoarder.com yeah. offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for magic online uh the budget option for the digital magic player oh how the, the turntables that's right it's true and still the best logo in magic the gather still a fantastic logo but as we move on to those desperate ravings Move on right here. You know, please check out our altar sleeve. Support the show by using the code Magic Mics at checkout for 5% off anything in that store, including a set of exclusive sleeves featuring the Magic Mics crew at altersleeves.com slash Magic Mics. I'm um, going to need to still need to get a good slide for that. <clears throat> That's on me. Point is, we're moving to Desperate Ravings, and this is where we get to talk about alchemy and what's wrong with alchemy, what's right with alchemy. We've lived with alchemy for a week now. A week ago, it was new and it was shiny and it was, you know, what what is this thing? A week later, everyone's pissed. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, for a lot of people, for a few reasons. One is, one of the main ones is that these should not affect historic. And wizards, you can you can tell me till you're blue in the face that this is a digital format and you meant for it to be digital only. It don't it doesn't feel that way. I can't I can't explain it. 
it doesn't feel that way. I don't, I don't well, know. It's not scientific. I'm just telling you yeah, that when you well, take Luminarch aspirin and you make her suck, and that's okay because she was too good in standard, but now she sucks in historic. So now all the people who had the cool white aggro deck with Luminarch aspirins, their deck kind of sucks now. And they wouldn't want their deck to suck. And could you please unsuck it? So, you know, the idea that you can take the cards and you can change them, cool. The idea that there's a standard alchemy and an alchemy format and these 30, you know, rares and mythic things going to show up later, great. But leave Historic alone. You can just leave Historic alone. So what I had posted on Twitter, uh, I think it was yesterday, was, you know, my little rant, like, look, we're, we're, at, we're a weekend. And here's what it is. And people don't like the changes affecting Historic. Now, whether that's Historic Brawl, honestly don't care that much. It's not a big deal. But Historic as a format does live and die oftentimes on some of the power levels of these cards that were just too good for standard. Um, and so, you know, right now, when they out, when they make an alchemy version, they change the card and they ban it in standard and they give you the alchemy version or whatever. To which I said, look, you should be giving wild cards. They should definitely be giving wild cards when they change cards, but they're not gonna. And we get it. They, they like money. It's fine. So what I said was, if you're going to change a card in standard, give us wild cards, but don't give us the alchemy versions. Give us the option, the opportunity to make the alchemy versions. But if we don't want them, we don't have to use them. So if I turn my Luminarch Aspirants into Inquisitor Captains, which is a terrific card, which is only an alchemy, well, that's cool because now I don't want to play with this card that's not good anymore, that's all tweaked and nerfed or whatever, and I get to play with this other card, which is sweet. So that was my option of something they could do that would just kind of help fix things, which is leave Historic alone. They get the printed versions of cards plus digital stuff like Historic Horizons. Um, and otherwise, they can keep their standard and standard alchemy stuff all day. It doesn't matter. That's Counterpoint. No. No. I just, I just disagree with you. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a, we don't have to red zone it. I just think that, first of all, a week is way too soon for you to be making uh for you and whoever else is complaining about alchemy to be like this format's dead and requires nothing also they just need to hurry up and put pioneer onto arena like that's gonna. that's the bottom line for me is if you want to have paper format paper format and then digital format digital format you do have to give people that option I think that's the biggest mistake. And that was going to be my point as well. I actually disagree with Evan. I think that I can 100% see how Historic was always meant to be a digital. And mm -hmm. like, I think that that is very reasonable. And I, I like that, you know, there is the one format leading into the other. The biggest mistake, and this is why I don't fault all of the negative hate on uh, the Alchemy Historic thing, is because Wizards didn't give them the replacement. There is no like so they were like oh don't worry this isn't getting rid of standard but it did get rid of historic as we know it yeah, now right. you and i can see the flip side of that to where it's always supposed to have been that way and we don't sure. fault them for it but they did really kind of mess things up for the players and didn't give them that alternative so i think that they should have waited on this um or maybe so let's say Pioneer's coming in a year, two years, then they should have left Historic alone. And then when we had rotation and the addition of Pioneer, then make this change so that those players had somewhere to go. Yeah, I like that. I think there's one final option here. And we're well, honestly one question here, which is what happens to Luminarch Aspirant when it rotates out of standard? Yeah. Does the alchemy version just disappear into the aether and now we have that? Or do they keep the alchemy version for historic? Do they revert it because it's still a digital format and do whatever they want? Question good, mark? Good question. I think what? it's going to stay the way it is. I think once they're tweaked, they're, they're tweaked in historic. It doesn't matter. Like they're not just changed only with standard in mind. I think they're tweaked in general. That's why we had tweaks on cards that are already rotated out. Yeah, That's this fair. is we just need we just need Pioneer on Arena now Agreed. more than ever. They're not giving it to you. Now they the counterpoint make... to that though is when it's no longer in standard and the card isn't seeing any play, maybe they'll give it a boost again. Right. Maybe they'll they might decide to put it back to its original state just to continue to diversify the field. Right. So that's the nice thing about that is that they have the flexibility to go in both directions, which we've already seen them do with some of the cards. 
like, or I, make it a two-two. Well, I would listen. I would absolutely love if they just revert the card back. That would be my yeah. optimal, my default. Like the default is they revert back to printed version when they rotate out of standard. I, sure. I don't know. Maybe that's different. Who knows? We'll find out. I think out. that's probably fine. I think the yeah. power level warrants that. Yeah. Um, so unless you guys feel super strongly talking about uh, land destruction and standard, I, I don't. Just, I think All that right. Richard Garfield is the oldest man possible. And <laughs> when – look, I understand that Richard Garfield is like – Stax is good actually – Okay, like I get that in your dorm room at Carnegie Mellon, you all only had about forty cards each. But like, let's yeah, there was well to give a quick recap of what we're talking about. Uh, Richard Garfield had replied on a thread for Reddit about how you know, can you tell us how Magic was intended to be played, and um, you know, Magic was intended to be hugely varied with lots of different avenues for play, which changed over time. Uh, it was not meant to be simply creatures forever. And I, I, but I do think there's a philosophy that, and and we've seen this sort of on the, the the macro of magic. There's a philosophy that spells were the most important thing, and then somewhere ish, you know, around eh, Ravnica, Kamigawa, even, um, you know, not so much Kamigawa because gifts ungiven, but sort of right after that, the creatures were the thing, and creatures got better, and creatures were the focus, and the creatures were the best cards because they provided interaction. Whereas spells don't always interact or sometimes their interaction is, you know, cancel your thing, you know, counterspell your stuff. And that's not always fun. But, you know, um, he says there's been a conflict between this view and the reality for a long time. Cards that destroyed mana or forced discard were hated and he wanted them to be part of the environment. And, you know, I wanted cards people loved and hated rather than cards that people thought were OK and all right. Um I can I can still hate some cards these days. You don't necessarily have to stone rain me for, for me to not like something. <laughs> I'm just just noting. Just gonna throw that out there. But it's cool. I just it was just kind of an interesting thing where, you know, oh, you know, Richard Garfield's cool with land destruction and hand destruction strategies, and that's good to know. So I'm being told by the chat that we should mention something that I can't seem to find proof of in a quick Google search. No, the, but, this is true. Um, if you log in right now on your Magic Online account, I think you needed to have one already. You can't like get a new one. But if you had a Magic Online account, log into it, and you should have a free Vintage Cube token on there hmm. waiting for you. Nice. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's good to know. I'm glad we included that. Thanks, chat. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maverick wow. Girl, for helping us out on that because that's super dope. Definitely check that out. If you've not played Cube, it's an absolute blast. If you have, obviously, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it is wonderful. All right. Let's turn the corner here to the finisher. Allie Warfield suggested on Twitter that Magic players should get a walk-up music for feature matches like pro wrestlers or baseball players. We've talked about this once or twice over the, over the years. So tell me, fellow All-Stars, what's your walk-up song, Ruben? I'm known for one thing and one thing only. The jokes. So when I'm walking up to the table and taking my seat under the lights, you can expect to hear a bass boosted remix. Weird Owls, White and Nerdy. <laughs> and then you have to running man. You have to do the That's running right. man. <laughs> Garbage patch. Nerd girl. Uh, so when I'm rolling into the feature match area, the single song that hypes me up the most is Thunderstruck by ACDC, especially since I'm usually slinging lightning bolts. Nice. Nice. Well, look, the goal is to win. And if I'm trying to win, I want to tilt my opponents. And nothing would tilt my opponents more than if my walk-up music for all of December is Last Christmas by Wham. Yeah. I can't. What's it called? What's that called again when you get whammed or Wham, It's Whamageddon. They say it's a Wham holla. <laughs> I got whammed at the airport mm -hmm. eating breakfast and the very next song was All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. <laughs> and some people observe Mariah Apocalypse. Um, I am a Whamageddon supporter, I'm but I would have lost both back to back. And I can't I can't have that, Wolfgang Puck. That's too much out of you. <laughs> And that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Nerd Girl. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. We'll move here to our final slide. And I had the wrong thing up, but whatever. 
Um, I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com. Our co-sponsors, CardHoarder.com and Alter Sleeves, using the code Magic Mike's on AlterSleeves.com. My co-host, Nerd Girl and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening, and hope you support us at Patreon.com/slash Magic Mike's. Please follow, like, tweet, favor, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mike's, on Twitter at Magic Mike's Cast, our Magic Mike subreddit, and like the Magic Mike's page on Facebook. Or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mike's. Good night, everybody.